Yo, what's up everyone? This is Cody, the Improper Engineer, and I've got version 2 of my magnetic print bed mod for your 3D printer. So, let's hop into it and see what I've changed. So a couple weeks ago, I released a video on my magnetic print bed that I made, and I got tons of feedback on it. So, let me answer some of the questions that you guys had, and then we will go over what I'm doing for version 2. So I think the thing I heard the most out of everybody is that the magnets that I chose only had a working temperature of up to 80 degrees Celsius, which for PLA and PETG on a CR10, you may be okay. But realistically, if you're going to do ABS, that's not going to work. And honestly, you're kind of at that threshold with PETG anyways um, of going over to the 80 degrees or staying under to the recommended 70, 75 degrees. But if you're using lock build, you can go even lower than that. I've printed perfectly fine with PETG on 60 on my bed. I'm going to start calling that Pet G because PUBG and you know stuff. If you've already done the version 1 mod, all you're really going to do to upgrade to version 2 is just to add a couple more magnets. Essentially that's it. So don't worry, you didn't just waste your time, but stay tuned to see everything that has changed. Okay, so first things first, the magnets. Now these magnets that I purchased have a higher working temperature than the previous magnets. The previous ones were only 80 degrees Celsius. Now these that I have in my hand, these bars, these can go up to 130 or 150. But either way, you're not going higher than that on your CR10. And overall, these are stronger than the previous ones that I linked to in version 1 of this. The next question that I got a lot was, why lock build over something like PEI? Well, honestly, it's because I had never used lock build. That's it. Nothing against PEI, it's on my Prusas, nothing wrong with it whatsoever, I wanted to try something new. But because of that question, I went ahead and picked up a sheet of PEI from Gizmo Dorks on Amazon, as well as another lock build sheet, because I need to have a couple replacement ones. So, you guys get to see me apply the PEI and I'll do a couple print tests for you. Next question I got a lot was about bed leveling. The CR10s are known to have a concave bed in the middle of it. Now what that means is that instead of the middle being completely flat, it has a little dip in it, like a bolt. If that's the case, I have a workaround that might help you combat that. But if your bed has a convex, which is where it goes up instead of down in the middle, then unfortunately I don't have a cheap and easy solution for you. I'm sorry. None of my beds were actually warped, so what I ended up doing is purchasing a bed um, as a spare in hopes that it would actually be warped when I got it. Now lucky for me, this one was warped, so I'll show you a cheap and easy way on what you can do for your warped bed. Now related to leveling is going to be the thickness difference between the glass that you were previously using and the new sheets that you're now using. Obviously the glass is a lot thicker than these sheets. So a couple people were having issues with their Z-stop actually not getting hit after they do this mod. Well, a fix to that is this. This is a Z-stop adapter. It's going to mount to your gantry. Granted this is only for the CR10s. You want to mount to your gantry and you'll have a screw that'll go down that you can adjust the Z height to. So essentially you can have your screw sitting out far and it's going to hit that Z stop a lot faster than a stock gantry would. Now mine is a little bit different compared to what a lot of people would use. I have the Volcano hot end on all three of my CR10s which means my hot end sits just a little bit lower than what stock hot ends do. But that's okay because you can still use this exact mod on a stock hot end. Now this is the wedge that's, that can help you with your bed leveling. Now this will essentially go in the middle of your bed. I recommend printing in PETG. Um, that way it has more heat resistance or ABS if you have access to ABS printing, which I don't like ABS, so I refuse to try it. As you screw it in right here, this wedge is going to raise and it's going to apply pressure to the middle of your plate, essentially raising only the middle of your plate. I also added a piece of cork to the top of it. That's going to help with the heat dissipation, keeping your printed part cooler. Hold on, Mr. Proper Engineer. I already made version one. Yeah. This mean I wasted all my time on it? Simon, that's a good question. It's essentially just adding more magnets, so it's not a big deal. Oh, okay, that's cool. Oh man, as soon as I heard you were doing version two, I threw my seg when I got over here as quick as I possibly could. I knew I had to talk to you about it. Oh man, the Segway ride. That's sounds pretty cold this time of year, but hey, I'm glad you stopped by. <laughs> hey everybody. Thanks, Simon. So now that that's out of the way, let's go ahead and cut the new sheets of metal and get ready to put the PEI sheet and the lock build sheet on. All right, so I brought one of the old plates out and I went ahead and laid it on my new sheet. And I traced an outline of the edge that I'm going to cut onto these. And I wanted to talk about the two different sizes of sheet metal that Lowe sells. You can get it in an 18 and the 24 inch. 
Now, I bought the 24 inch even though I knew it wasn't gonna fit. Now, the 18 is perfect. You're gonna have a little bit of metal left over. You just throw it away, it's no big deal. The 24 inch one is too short by about half of an inch only because of the tabs. If you're not doing tabs, you can get away with a 24 inch and essentially get two out of one piece. Um, I think that this one was $6 as opposed to $4, so it's not like you're really saving a ton of money. I'm gonna get these cut and get back inside because it's cold and I have to open the garage door for light. So the sooner I'm back inside in the heat, the better. Okay, so that wasn't too bad. Now the only thing left to do is clean both sides. I like to keep both sides clean so your hands don't get all dirty. But you clean both sides with alcohol and then we are ready to put the sheets on. All right, so I think the first one I'm gonna do is the PEI sheet because I've never done it. And I'm kind of nervous to see how it goes, so let's try it. Now again, this one came from Gizmo Dorks on Amazon and I will put a link in the description where you can order it from. And the PEI sheet is gonna have protective film on both sides of it. Do not forget to remove that before you stick it down because if you do, well, obviously it's probably not gonna last. Not really sure what these extra double-sided strips are for. Side. Okay, I'm gonna attempt to do this one the exact same way that I did, did the old ones. You just peel one side of it, stick it, and put it down. I'm gonna try to do this a little bit sideways so you guys can see. Ah, uh, see there's some air bubbles in this one. So I got a couple air bubbles in this one. And I don't know if it's because of my technique or if it's because I'm worried about making sure that the camera can see what I'm doing. But there is a very easy fix to this. You don't have to peel it up. So if you get air bubbles, don't try to repeel it up because you're just gonna make it even worse. What you do is you find, wow there's a lot of this one. You find the air bubbles and you take something sharp such as a razor blade. You put just a tiny crease in it. And then that should allow you to flatten it out perfectly. You're not going to have any issues. Yep, that one's gone. Let's do this one. That one. Oh my gosh, there is a lot. Good job, Cody. And there, and there, and there, and there, and there, and there, and there. I don't know, guys. I don't have such a good feeling about this now. So now peel the corner of your tape up that you lay down. Take your PEI sheet and only take one side of the film off. And I believe that both of these are the exact same. Both are glossy. Yep, both sides are exactly the same. So we're just going to take one side of this off. Try not to bend it too bad. I mean, it's pretty thick as it is, um, but you can still put a permanent crease in it, which we definitely don't want. The side that you just peeled off uh, will be very prone to dirt and dust. Try not to, you know, try not to get it dirty. And then just line it up as best as you can. Looks like that's pretty good. And let it go. That feels pretty good. I don't feel any air bubbles. Feels good, guys. Freezing. It's definitely heavier than the lock build sheets. Um, I still have the protective coating on top, and I'm going to leave that on there until I'm ready to place it over there, until I'm ready to start printing on it. Um, Maybe that's why I didn't want to go with PEI in the beginning because I felt like it got scratched way too easily. The surface was too easy to get messed up. But I mean, this came out pretty good. You know, just take some time. I'm, I'm by no means perfect at this. I actually hate putting film and stuff on. I would almost rather pay somebody to do it. When I get new phones, I pay 
whoever buy the phone off, I usually pay them to put the protective uh, cover on the screen. That's how bad I hate it. Um, but this didn't come out too bad. Not terrible. I think, I think I'll be able to use it no problem. All right, let's do the lock build. The lock build is much easier. Same thing with the lock build too. Try not to bend it too much while you're pulling it out because you, again, can leave a permanent crease in it. All right, there we go. Nice and pretty. Pick your side out that you're gonna put it on. It looks like neither of these sides is better than the other. Oh, that was perfect. Yep, that was perfect. No bubbles whatsoever under this one. Great. So now we have our lock build and our PEI sheet. Um, again, the PEI sheet is definitely heavier than the lock build. I mean, not by much. Not like it's going to make a difference, but it's definitely heavier. Now, before I start to print, I did want to mention spring steel. I had a lot of people ask if I was still going to try to pursue finding some spring steel, and I'm not. There's no point to it. These sheets work perfect. No need for spring steel. Now, if you're running these in large quantity, such as 10 plus, yeah, do spring steel because you have to buy it by the sheet to have it custom cut. But if you're just doing a couple of these like I am, it's too expensive to try to get some spring steel. So these work great. And I already have the bed off of this one, and as you can see, I was trying a different pattern with some of the old magnets that I had on here. Um, you can see they're kind of all over the place. These little ones ended up not working out too well uh, for larger prints. So if you're doing small stuff, the little ones are fine. But if you're going to do anything over five, six inches, you got to go to the bigger ones. And if you're going to go even bigger than that, the new magnets that I am going to use for this video are so much better. Are so much better than the little ones. Now, there's not a huge performance difference between the big ones, but they still work better than the big ones do. Let's talk about placement of the new magnets. You can get by with nine magnets per bed. If you need more than that, you can do more, you're not going to hurt anything. But with nine magnets on the bed, I've been able to print a figurine that's over 12 inches tall. No problem, the sheet did not slide whatsoever. So with nine, you're, you're pretty much good to go. If you have nine, the way that I would place them is one, two, three, four, five, Six. I already grabbed one off of it. That's how strong these are. Seven, eight, nine. These things are pretty strong, and if your placement's off just a little bit, it's not gonna matter. Use a double-sided silicone tape or any other adhesive and stick that on the back side of the magnet and put it on. After you have the magnets on and you still don't think they're strong enough, all you have to do is double up the magnets. So if you have one magnet that's already on the back of this, all you do is add another. And I'll demonstrate. So, with one magnet, it slides off. I can't hold it up. But if I put two magnets on it, it holds it up no problem. And the magnets don't affect the heating elements whatsoever, so you're not going to hurt anything with that. If you do have easy ABL, I can't comment on that because I obviously don't have it. I don't, I'm not a big fan of auto leveling stuff. I prefer to manually level my whole bed. So for those of you that have done this that have Easy Able or Easy ABL, whatever it's called, uh, please in the comments say whether it worked or whether it doesn't work, uh, what you had to do to make it work if you have to do something different. That way everybody else that has one will know what they need to do to make it work. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my bed put on here and I will show you guys what you need to do to make sure that your bed is level all around and not concave in the middle. Alright, so my end stop adjustment that I made will take one of your spare CR10 screws so you don't have to go out and buy one. I forget what size these are. I want to say they're M5s. Don't hold me to that because I really don't know. But they have the bigger head on them, the same as your roller wheels do. It's, just, it's the same one, except this is the short version of it. This one's only about 10 millimeters long. So all you're going to do is screw it up in the bottom of this piece. You're going to take the bolt for the wheel off completely and slide it through here and then assemble it just the way it was before and essentially that's it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. 
It's on there. I'm gonna move the camera a little bit closer so you guys can see it a little bit better. And all right guys, so I'm back again. And yes, I've changed again because it's another day. This is now like the fourth day into recording this and I've had all kinds of issues. So hopefully I have all these worked out. So after I started recording the last portion of this video, I realized that the Z-Stop that I had previously designed actually wasn't going to work. And I feel dumb because, well, I just assumed it would be perfect and that's probably my mistake. Yeah, I definitely shouldn't have done that. But I have it redesigned here and I'm going to go ahead and install this and let you guys see me install it and then let you guys see me actually uh, adjust when the Z end stop actually gets hit so you can see how this works. So let's do that. Okay, so how this works is you have your adjustable screw here which is a leftover bolt from your CR10 kit so you don't have to go out and get a whole nother bolt and you're just gonna adjust it until your nozzle is no longer digging into your bed when you hit auto home. So I'm gonna go to my screen and hit auto home There it is. You can see that there's a little bit of a gap here and that's probably a little bit too much so I'm going to adjust this up a little bit. Now I'm going to adjust this one for the PEI sheet which is a little bit thicker than the lock build so let's go ahead and put this on here and see what it looks like. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good. I can do some really good adjusting from here. All right. Let's take the sheet back off. Now let's talk about making sure that your bed's not concave in the middle, and if it is, what to do about it, which this one is. So what I have here is a wedge. It's 3D printed. I printed it in PETG so that it'll be a little bit heat resistant. And there's also a piece of cork board on top, which is supposed to help with the heat resistance as well. So what you're gonna do is put this underneath the very middle of your bed, with, or without having the thermistor sitting directly above it, because you don't wanna damage the thermistor as you're wedging this up. So here's the wedge, and how it works is as you tighten your screw up, it's going to push the wedge piece straight up. Straight up and down, just like that. Now if you loosen it, it's not gonna work so well. It works much better as you're tightening, but it still doesn't even push. Right, so got my wedge, I'm just gonna slide it in here. And the first thing that you're gonna wanna do is make sure that it's snug against the bottom of this. That way it's obviously not gonna move around as you're trying to tighten it. And you want it as close to the very middle that you can get. That's gonna be the best. Okay, so you can see the wedge right here. You can see I already have it kind of pushed up to give me some pressure there. So I've downloaded a dial indicator mount for the CR10s right here. And this is going to hold your dial indicator on it. So after you have this printed, which will be linked below, you just slide your dial indicator in and you're essentially good to go. Now, I'm sure an actual engineer can come in and talk about the difference between the three plane leveling and four plane leveling and all that jazz, but I don't have that information. And to be honest, I haven't needed that information to get a level bed out of this. So I'm just gonna go on with it. What I normally do is start at the front right corner. I try to get the end of the dial indicator right next to the screw. And you don't have to do this. This is just because I can do a little bit easier this way. See how it's at, at about 83 right there? Well, I'm gonna turn the zero. Okay, and it's almost exactly on the zero right there. So I know that this right here is set to zero. I'm gonna move it over. You can also use your control board to move everything over. Some people say it's better that way. I personally haven't had an issue doing it the way that I'm doing it, so I'm just gonna keep doing it. I'm gonna push it all the way over to this one. You can see that this is way off. This is way too high. So at this point, I would go through and bring it down. Great, it's at zero. You do the same thing to all the other corners. Wow, that's, that's way off. All right, so I went ahead and did all corners. You can see the middle is off just a little bit. So at this point, what you would do is take your screwdriver and you would go under and adjust your wedge that you placed underneath the middle of it. Now, obviously, you're not going to have to adjust it very much. See that? See the dial going up as I'm adjusting? Magnets make this hard because it keeps grabbing the screwdriver. But you can see the indicator slowly going up. All right, there we go. The middle is now sitting at zero. Let's check the other corners. That's at zero. That's at zero. That's at zero. And just for shits and giggles, let's go check this one. 
and that's at zero too. That's how easy it is to fix your concave middle in the bed. Obviously when you print, you don't want your dial left on there, so be sure to take that off before you start printing. That's just added weight that you don't need sitting on the hot end. So we made a PEI sheet and a lock build sheet today. And I was able to print with the PEI sheet, and I have to say, the couple prints I had to do with it were pretty nice. This is one little guy that I printed off of it. This is a Flexirex, and I forget who the author is, but I'll put a link in the bio to the exact one that I printed. And he came out perfect, and he stuck perfect. But after I removed the sheet from the heat bed, it was still a little bit warm. I was able to barely pull on it, and it came right off, like no problem. The lock build isn't quite that easy, but it's still easier than a normal print bed. So which one would I choose, the PEI or the lock build? Yes, they're both fantastic. I can't choose one over the other. So I'm printing with the PEI enough in this scenario. Um, so. All I know is that I love the lock build. A couple more prints and I'm, I'm sure I'll be able to give a better answer, but either way, you're not gonna go wrong with whichever way you choose. I'm still gonna suggest lock build for its ease of application, for the ease of use, for how easy it is to clean. It doesn't scratch nearly as easy as the PEI, but the PEI did leave a glass-like surface on the print. See that reflection? Oh, it's so nice. And it also made it a little bit more transparent because it was all printed flat right here. See that reflection? Isn't that cool? But if you bought a Gizmo Dork sheet and you printed on PEI before, you already know it's gonna leave a glass finish. Now, if you don't like the glass finish, you can take something like an 800 grit sandpaper and scratch the whole surface down and it'll be fine. It'll be a matte print and all that jazz, but use a preference. All right guys, I think that wraps up version two. We went over the magnets, we went over how to level the bed, we went over the difference between PEI and lock build, and we went over how to cut it. I don't think there's anything else. Okay, well that's all I got this time. Um, Thanks again for watching guys. Once again, this is Cody the Improper Engineer. And if you enjoyed what you saw, give me a thumbs up and a subscribe. And if you didn't like what you saw, you can give me a thumbs down, but please let me know why you didn't like what you were watching. If I have any information incorrect, please let me know. I will gladly change it. That's it. See you next time.